我把选如我就。The aim of this audio is to address a problem that has been going on for some months in the Faculty of Dental Science, College of Medicine, University of Lagos. The problems that are addressed here are not only peculiar to the university or the hospital loop, but every sector of the Nigerian system has been affected by one or more of these problems, and is still currently being affected by these problems. I'm trying to find the genesis of those problems, like asking the chicken and the egg who came first. The health and educational sector which this institution combines is really suffering and there is no sight of help anywhere in it. For the sake of this audio, I am going to give a brief overview of the Faculty of Dental Sciences and what the typical timetable of a student here it looks like. The Faculty of Dental Science is a section of the university aimed at training standard health, dental health professionals which include dentists. It is made up of five departments. Oral and maxillofacial surgery department, oral and maxillofacial pathology department, child dental health department, restorative dentistry department, and preventive dentistry department. Students are only admitted into this faculty after being passed, after having passed their first professional exams, second professional examinations, and the junior operative technology examinations. On getting admission into the Faculty of Dental Sciences, which is in 500 level, you are given a certain number of criteria as a student to fulfill. This criteria includes scaling and polishing, minor, minor fillings, extractions, denture making, and lots more. The criteria also includes 75% class and clinic attendance. It is very, very necessary that students are able to fulfill that criteria and go beyond that, not just for examination purposes, but that is what makes them confident practicing dentists. But over time, corruption, embezzlement and infrastructural decay is the order of the day in this dental clinic. Over time, the number of students applying for dentistry in the University of Lagos has increased, which should be a plus for the institution. But the lecturers don't think so. They tell the students that all of you cannot graduate. MDCN has given us a quota of 40 graduating dentists, really, for an actively growing population. There are no plans for expansion, there are no plans to revamp infrastructure, and there are no plans to improve the curriculum. The criteria of 40 graduating dentists that was used some 20 years ago is still what is being used now. Let me not forget the light situation in the college. Anybody who has been to this place knows that electricity supply is poor and there is no generator. I repeat, 
new generators that power the dental clinic. Dental clinics need electricity. The equipment there is sophisticated. Electricity is needed to sterilize equipment, to take x-rays, to operate den the dental chair, and to do much more. Electricity, no electricity in a dental clinic is as good as an empty room. Students need electricity to do procedures like minor fillings, and they are unable to do this when there is no electricity. When students complain about poor electricity supply, the lecturers say, other people have struggled through this. We even struggled through this. You can also do it. My question is, do what? Are they expected to drill the tooth with the hammer? What are the standards we're trying to keep up with? Do we now take pride in struggling for the basic things that are needed in the practice? When patients come to the hospital, they are forced to go back as they cannot be attended to and they do not return, thereby preventing students from making their procedures, which is actually their rights, which is actually a method of learning. You see, the dental chairs in this place and the surrounding in the dental clinic is enough for it to get infected. The place is so dirty and disgusting. The chairs are old and they do not work, apart from the fact that they are inadequate. The chairs are not swiped in between patients. What I mean is that after a patient has been seen on that chair, after a patient has been attended on that chair, the next patient goes back goes to sit on that chair without being swiped or without the chair being swiped or disinfected. The chairs are also inadequate and the students are forced to do their basic diagnosis on the waiting bench outside the clinic. The doctor student ratio is also very, very, very poor about one student to 25 students or at best three students to 25 students the students are usually grouped to rotate around each of the departments so you don't have all the students in the clinic in a particular department at a time so the students are grouped when one group is in oral max the facial surgery the other group is in child dental health and they rotate through the departments like that and you have to have a supervising dentist for there to check the student's work. Imagine having three dentists supervising 25 students and that's the best you can get. Let me tell you what's going to happen. The students cannot learn. And you know what? The clinic has no plans. In fact, the regulatory body, MDCN, has no plans of training more dentists. It is 40 dentists or nothing. As we all know, the hospital is the easiest place to get infected. And the alarming part is that the students, not even the students now, the doctors who are training them, use one face mask for the whole day. Not one face mask per person, one face mask for all the patients that, have, that are seen that day. You know what? That's just disgusting. And you see that that's the easiest way to get an infection. Because, for example, if a patient, if a doctor finishes seeing a patient that has tuberculosis and doesn't throw away that face mask, you and, and your next and the next and your next person that he or she is going to see you're the next victim of the disease because he will wait and attend to you and also with tuberculosis any infection that can be transmitted via the air you are at risk of getting it materials like gloves and sterilized gauzes are not even available in the clinic students are forced to buy their materials to attend to patients these are many, many more have been going on in the clinic for a very, very long time. And now it's time to speak up. As I speak to you now, about 22 students in the 600 level class and 38 students in the 500 level class have been asked to repeat because they were not able to meet up their procedures. But you know what? That's the master plan. Because the students are willing to do anything to make up their procedures. It's a plus to the clinic. They don't need to revamp infrastructure. The students are sensitized and told that a good dentist must go out and look for the patient. And a good dentist must also pay for the treatment cost of the patient he or she brings to the clinic. That way, the hospital is get, able to get some money and there's no need to revamp, revamp the infrastructure. I mean, why should we revamp the infrastructure when we are getting money for the basic things we have here, the things that are not even functioning. The students are used as baits 
to keep the clinic running. And that's not meant to be so. Because if infrastructure is revamped, patients will come into the hospital. If infrastructure is there, people will walk into the hospital. But there's nothing to attend to them, so people don't come. And the hospital, the clinic, the government, the lecturers are not ready to look for help. The regulatory body, MDCN, which we are meant to trust, are very aware of these problems, but they turn a blind eye to it. They are very, very corrupt, and they have sold our souls for a few pieces of silver. They collect a few naira notes from the college authorities and the school authorities in order to keep their accreditation. The students are also sensitized to lie to the regulatory bodies when they come and they tell them that and the students tell the regulatory bodies that all is well in the clinic you will see the clinic being painted looking very bright when it's time for accreditation in the long run we are building criminals not doctors a doctor is taught to ask for help when they cannot find when they when they find out that they cannot manage a situation they are called they are called and they're encouraged to ask for help from their senior colleagues but that's not the case now because we're building this nation is building people who would lie to even the regulatory bodies and then we sometimes really don't have to blame the students because there's an issue of victimization a student will say no we don't have the infrastructure and then the lecture will pick on that student and make sure that student doesn't graduate this is the country we are this is the country we live in and let's not lie, as I said before, not only this is not only happening in the college or in Luth, it's happening in every system, every sector of this Nigerian economy. There's a normal Nigerian mentality, and the question we we'll all ask. What of the people that were able to write the exams? What of the people that were not asked to repeat? How did they do it? Let's stop thinking that way. That is digressing from the subject matter. <laughs> The dental clinic is substandard and not worthy of training students. And therefore, the so-called students who are even able to scale through don't even know the correct practice. And they are putting themselves at risk, working under very unhygienic conditions. I believe that what the MDC and come and do is disaccredit the school. But apparently, they are not ready to do that. They are enriching themselves. Dental personnel in this place are not being taught the best practice at all. The place is extremely filthy, and as we all know, the mouth is a gateway to your body, and infections can easily be transmitted via the mouth. We could come to this place for a simple dental procedure and live with something very worse, and something, live with something worse than you came with. The environment is dirty. I cannot overemphasize that. It is filthy. And if you think it doesn't concern you, think twice. This set of people that are currently being trained now will come out as dentists, half big dentists, if not quarter big. And they are the people who will treat you and I, treat our relatives, and possibly train our children to be dentists too. Are we going to call expat expatriates to train them? Hmm. The issue of the students repeating is, not, is even very painful. The essence of repeating a class is to ensure that whatever was missed during the previous year is gained during this repeat year. But in this case, this repeat is pointless. It is the form of punishment and a rebound move by the lecturers to cover their tracks. The number of repeating students in the 500 level class is 38. Going to add to the current 500 level class, those that weren't originally there, they went from 400 level going to 500 level, they are about 40. 40 plus 38, that's 78 students. Please, what can they gain? The same old facilities, no plans of expansion. The system has definitely failed us, and there's nothing to gain because repeat here is going to be a wasted one. Why should students come in in order to search for knowledge and be punished for a system error that they were born to meet? A system that has failed every one of us. We hear of increased rate of depression and suicide. I believe this can be one of the causes of it. Because you can't change anything. You are born to meet it. You are born to suffer. You are born to struggle and to offer the basic things of life. And when you can't get it, you're called a failure. It is the business of every one of us to come out and help. Health is wealth. We must make sure that everything needed to treat patients and train a future health personnel in this country are around. 
lend your voice to this course. You could just be the next person that may be treated, and this is not a matter of God forbid. I'm calling on parents, health stakeholders, Ministry of Health, health workers, beyond corrupt NBC and officials, the vice chancellor of the university, and everybody listening to this, Nigerians or non Nigerians, to make sure we stop and nothing to make the health sector a better one. The lives of everyone is definitely at stake. And do you know the funny thing? You will hear that lecturers will be looking for the person who did this audio. They will want to gather information of how this thing leaked instead of revamping and trying to help the system. They have sold us for a few pieces of silver. We are gone. Even sold for a few naira notes. Once again, I call on everybody listening to this audio to come and save what left, what's left of the institution and we can build this again if we all join our hands to build this. Anybody who has anything contrary to say should come out with proof. I have done my bit. This is from a concerned Nigerian citizen. Thank you.